Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday, I started a new video series. It's a photo editing challenge where I take the same image and I process it in multiple applications. Now, yesterday was the first video in that series and I took this raw file and I processed it in Lightroom. And this is the edit that I created in Lightroom. Today, we're going to take that very same raw file and we're gonna process it in Capture One version 21. In the description below this video, there's a link. You could download this file for free and you could use it for practice and process it in any application that you happen to use. Also in the description below this video, I'll have instructions how you could download my software comparison guide. In the guide, I compare six different post-processing applications to one another. Now, as far as processing this image, you're going to find that my workflow is very similar to what I did in Lightroom. I don't really deviate much from my workflow, although I just want to add something. Yesterday, I kind of left out my first two steps because I didn't need to do them. The first thing I do with an image almost all the time is I crop it. I like to crop very early in my workflow. In this case, I like what came out of camera. I don't need to crop it. So that would have been step one. Step two is I just white balance. I'm satisfied with the white balance and I really don't need to do anything there. So I'm not doing that either. So I'll jump right to step three like I did yesterday. And I want to look at the image first and see what does it need most. And in this case, it's relatively dark. So I wanna open up the shadow. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm going to go to the exposure tab in Capture One and I'm going to go down to high dynamic range. And you can see we have highlight shadows whites and blacks. So I'm going to go to the shadow tab or shadow slider, I'm sorry, and we're going to open that up considerably. Then I'll go to the highlights and I'm going to pull that down and you'll see when I do, you'll get a lot more detail in the clouds. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm just looking at the clouds and I want to get more detail out of those clouds. So I'm going to turn that down rather significantly. Now next, I would usually do white or blacks or white and black sliders in applications. But Capture One has a tool that I prefer to use, and that's Levels. So instead of doing the white and black sliders, I'm going to jump right down, I'm sorry, to Levels, not Curves. And what I like to do is I'll go to the highlight side here, and you can see how the histogram is pretty flat right in here. I usually take this bottom slider and I move it till the histogram starts moving up. Then similarly, I'll do that to the shadow side, and you can see that that is pretty abrupt, so I don't have to move that too far. Now, what I will often do is I'll turn on exposure warnings to see if I'm clipping the highlights. And to do that, you go over here on the right-hand side and click this little triangle. And when I do that, you can see I'm getting red in here. So I am clipping the highlights. This is a sunset, so sometimes it's impossible not to clip the highlights when you're photographing a sunrise or sunset. You'll notice yesterday in that Lightroom video, I was able to... Uh, get rid of all the clipping in the highlights. And I'll see if I could do it here. I'll go to the Midtones tab and see if I move that around, if that helps a little bit, maybe a little. I could go back to highlights all the way down. I could go to the Exposure tab right here and I could try moving Exposure down, but you can see it's really making the whole image dark. So really um, here, it's a little bit more of a challenge. I could go to the whites, but you know what? It is a sunset. There is going to be some clipping. I mean, after all, the sun is there. So I really am not able. I could come here and I could move this this way, but I don't really like the result. So I prefer to do it that. Like, So that's all right. I mean, I'm clipping it a little bit. That's no big deal. So we're going to turn the exposure warning off. I'm going to clip, click right there. So I'm done with the tone, at least for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the color tab. It's this tab right here. And we're going to go to the color editor and I'm going to go to orange. And this is pretty much what I did yesterday in Lightroom. I'm going to uh, increase the saturation and bring the lightness down a little bit. I'll go to yellow and I'll do similar. I'll increase saturation, turn light, lightness down a little bit. And that, it will help probably the uh, clipping a little bit as well. And you can see it did. And then we'll finally go to blue. And I'm just going to make that just a little darker. All right. I'm not going to add any saturation there. So, so far, so good. I'm going to jump back to the Exposure tab, and I'm going to go to Clarity. Close all these down. Go to Clarity, and I'm going to use the Natural Method. You can see in that drop, uh, 
uh, drop down. It has natural, punch, neutral, and classic. We'll go to natural. And I like, again, working from bottom up. I'll go to structure. I say again because I do that in Lightroom as well. So I'll move structure to the right, and I'll move clarity to the right a little bit. And that looks okay there. So I'm pretty much done. Now, like uh, yesterday's uh, video in Lightroom, I really don't have to do anything with noise reduction because there's no noise in this image. Uh, none at all. So I really don't have to worry about that at all. Um, I could go over to uh, this tab here. This is the details tab and I could sharpen it, but you could see it already added some default sharpening. It already added some default noise reduction. Yeah, I'm not really going to do anything there. I'm just going to keep those default values because they look fine. Now what I do need to do, like yesterday in the Lightroom video, these cliffs in the background are too dark. So I want to brighten those up. So I need to use a brush to do that. To do this, you need to put it on its own layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layers, and you'll see that layers are under numerous tabs. All right, they're the same thing. It's all layers. So we're going to go to layers, and I'm going to long press the left mouse button on this plus sign, and I'm going to then add an empty adjustment layer. Now what it means by empty adjustment layer, that means there's no mask drawn on this at all. So if I say go to exposure and I take exposure all the way up, you can see nothing's happening. All the way down, nothing's happening. That's because I need to use a brush to tell Capture One where to apply the adjustment. So I'm going to get a brush. You could get the brush right here. All right. And you could then right click right on the image and you'll get brush attributes, size, hardness, opacity, and flow. Um, I think hardness is good. Let's get a little bigger brush like that. You also could use the bracket keys for the brush. Right bracket key would make it larger, a left bracket key smaller, and I'm just going to brush on the cliffs. Now you can see it's putting a red overlay down so it, I could see exactly where I'm brushing. And be careful we don't spill over where I don't want it to be. I'll get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key a few times. And I'll come in here and give it this a little better. And in here, a little smaller even with the left bracket key. And up there. All right, so we have the mask drawn. Good enough. Now I'm going to come to exposure. Now you'll see that if I like just blast it, you could see how it's just affecting where I painted, right? So we're just going to brighten that up a little bit. Just make that a little brighter. Maybe we'll even go to saturation, increase, increase saturation a little bit. Um, because that mask is there, whatever adjustments I do where that little brush is, it's going to affect just where I painted because I'm on that adjustment layer. You could see it right there. So if I felt the need, let's say, to go to the color tab, I could go to the color editor and let's say go to yellow and I could um, like make the yellows brighter or something like that. But I, I really don't want to do that. I don't need to do that. I just wanted to show you that. All right, I'm pretty much done. I typically would add a vignette now, but I see another problem that I didn't notice in my Lightroom edit. Uh, if we look up in here, it looks like there might be a little bit of a sensor spot right there right there. It might have been water. It was a windy day. There might have been a drop of water on my lens. Uh, over here, I didn't notice it as readily. You can see it is there though so, uh, in my Lightroom edit. So what I want to do is I want to adjust that. So I need to now add either a clone or a heel layer. To do that, we're going to go back to layers and we're going to long press this plus sign again and we're going to do a heel layer, new heel layer. And when you do that, you'll automatically get the heel tool. You can see the little Band-Aid is active. If I long press that, you can have a healing mask or a cloning mask. We're using the healing mask. And then I'll get a larger. Again, you could right-click to get the brush attributes. Attributes. I'm going to use the right bracket key and make it a little larger. And I kind of messed up my paint, but that's right. I'll just go like that and see what that looks like. And that looks fine. So I'm pretty much done with that. Now we could go and uh, just go to the um, exposure tab again and you can see how vignetting doesn't have a little brush icon next to it that means the vignetting will affect everywhere not just where I painted with the brush or where I adjusted with the um, the heel tool so if I go here it'll affect the whole the whole image now most of my landscape images I like to add a darker vignette 
uh, just very slightly to help draw everyone's attention towards the middle. I'm going to go get that tool there. So you could get more, like everyone's attention more towards the middle. If my landscape image had a very strong subject in it, like a person, I may not use a vignette because everyone would probably be looking at the person, but you never know. So I'd say that I'm done. There's my edit in Capture One. And we'll compare it uh, to my edit in Lightroom. You can see there's Lightroom. There's Capture One. Similar Lightroom one, maybe a little darker, maybe a little bit more baked compared to the Capture One edit. It's very subjective. Whether or not you like one better over the other, that's really, you know, like I said, it's not an objective thing. It's just what you may like, may not like either. That's why you should download the raw file. I have a link in the description below this video and just process it for practice the way you would like to process it. Um, all right, now I mentioned this is a series. Also in the description below this video, I have a link to a playlist. In that playlist, I'll have every video in the series. So far, we only have two videos in the series. Tomorrow or the next day, within the next couple of days, I'm going to do the third video. The third video will be uh, the same image processed in Exposure X6. So look for that very soon. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.